Welcome back. You're listening to Cross the Border. This is a live prophecy reality edition. Uh, we're going to talk about a little, what's going on in the world as far as the political heavens or the political hierarchy of the world and uh, what we see going on today. And uh, perhaps the rise of China has something to do with it. Uh, we've been talking about uh, there's a lot of talk about World War III. And they get people out there rooting for World War III. It's like they're sure that that's going to happen. If we're going to have a World War III. And uh, I keep con considering and comparing that with the scripture. And I believe, you know, I mean, I could be wrong, but I, uh, I don't believe that we could have another greater uh, shaking of the world scene than we had through the 40 years that encompassed World War I and World War II. Yeah. Let's see. I understand. Okay. Okay, well, I don't understand. Somebody put something in the chat room there. I don't understand the comment. <laughs> he says, I understand. I have to figure out a way. Okay. Some context would be helpful there. But anyway, back to uh, the seventh vial being poured out and uh, how that affects us today. What does that mean? And I'm still pondering these things as I get to my scripture verses here. Um, now, we, we believe as historicists, this is pretty much accepted by all of your historicist expositors that the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Okay, and we saw three unclean spirits. So this was, I believe, poured out during um, the uh, the aftermath of the French Revolution. Okay, or during the effects of the French Revolution, but this sixth vial was poured out. Um, but the, that the way of the kings of the East might be prepared. But does that preparation mean that the kings of the East would immediately? Okay. But we saw, and I believe that uh, E.B. Elliott clearly identifies that the ways that the Euphrates representing the Islamic powers that were a woe to Christendom, uh, for a millennium, at least, uh, to Western Christendom, for a millennium, going all the way to North Africa and, and Spain in their conquests on several occasions, uh, that, that that was dried up then, and to make way for the kings of the East. But when would the kings of the East rise? That's the question. Not immediately, apparently, but this drying up of the Euphrates powers, and we'll call them that, those Islamic uh, Mohammedan powers that were such a woe to Christianity, were dried up during that period. And, uh, and after that, to where they're almost completely dried up so that they're not a threat to anybody on the earth anywhere now. Okay, So I would say completely dried up. Now that they're completely dried up, uh, the kings, the ways of the kings of the east is only being prepared. Okay, doesn't say that they are going to come forth, but the the way is prepared for them to rise up in the future, perhaps during, or the era of the seventh vial, and that's what I believe. Um, so we get to the era of the seventh vial. The seventh and the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of, of heaven from the throne, saying, "It is done." Okay. The meaning, the last vial is poured out. It's done. There are no more vials after this one. This is the final one. That's how I interpret the little clause there. It is done. Okay. So it is done. And here we are. We're in that era. And it, and he records, and there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. Now, if you're a prophecy buff and you've looked at Old Testament prophecies and you understand the apocalyptic meaning 
of the earthquake, okay? And the, that it refers to political machinations due to war or uh, revolution and things like that. And it says so mighty an earthquake. So we, we expect to see a political, we expect to see wars and death and revolutions and changes in the political heavens of the earth and the political hierarchy of the whole earth so mighty and so great such as was not since men were upon the earth and would not the era uh, encompassing world war one and world war two be adequately adequately described as the political earthquake being so mighty and so great such as was not since men were upon the earth and i have to say yeah it fits finally something that fits you know and so that that is my uh my position that i'm taking and my uh my conclusion as a result of my study of prophecy and history to get to that point so this takes care of that though we now see that that has the seventh one has been fulfilled been pour, poured out it is done the seventh pile has been poured out into the air now i still haven't come to the conclusion of the import of the vial being poured into the air but i'm going to look further into that because now i got to look at each vial and where and how it was poured out to try to get some conclusion as to exactly what the symbol of the vial being poured out into the air means. But, but I'm saying as far as the, the great earthquake, so mighty and so great, such as was not meant since men were upon the earth, would describe that era encompassing World War I and World War II. I really believe one war with a pause in between, basically. Because the war comes from the same place both times. It originates in the same place both times. And the enemy, is the primary enemy <clears throat> to those that are affected by that political earthquake uh, is the same enemy. So really the same. And since it is the last vial. So does that, so now when they're speaking of World War Three, I tend to think not so much that there's not going to be anything mightier and greater. Uh, such as was not since men were upon the earth, <clears throat> as there was encompassing that era. I don't believe that there will be a World War III. Like I said, I could be wrong. Unless World War III is the one that happens, that is called Armageddon, and it happens after Jesus returns. That will be World War III. That's um, what I have to uh, buy uh, everything that I understand of uh, scripture prophecy and how to interpret it, that's the, what I'm looking at happening. That there's not good. I mean, because you have like, um, what's his name over there at True News? Rick, Rich, Rickard, <laughs> Rick Wiles. Yes. What a name, Wiles. Okay. But Rick Wiles and True News, um, he's, pushing World War III every day, every time you go over there. Um, he'll be talking about, we're in the middle, it's World War III. But is the whole world involved, really? I mean, it's NATO and Russia, okay, basically. But that's not really a world war. World war is when uh, Japan and everybody else joins in, okay, and, and uh, China and South Africa, and the war is everywhere, you know, uh, then I believe it'll be a world war when, when, the, when you have different targets around the world, not just little Ukraine. That doesn't add up to World War III. Certainly there's a threat of a world war there, okay? That it could be the spark of a world war, but it's not a world war yet. And I don't believe it. I, I, cause I believe the powers that be that are behind this pulling the strings, I don't believe they want a world war because I think it would destroy a lot of their plans if there were so much devastation as there was during World War II over the whole earth. Let's say we drop a few nukes on America and some in, and we got some, you know, we got stuff going on between China 
is affecting the whole area around it, even going to Australia. And uh, it's chaos everywhere and infrastructure is falling down and and uh, going in and out. This is the big threat of World War III. This is what people think of it that's going to happen. But how will the Antichrist get his one world monetary system if he allows the infrastructure to fail all over the earth? Because the infrastructure to have, um, you know, internet available so everyone can have digital money, they have to keep that working. It's it's okay if it doesn't work very well in the Ukraine right now while they're just trying to scare the bejesus out of everybody and thinking, oh, no, it's going to be World War Three. I think it's just another fear tactic, another threat that they're proposing to the world because they want people to be in fear because they do want to roll out their 2030 mark of the, you know, mark of the beast monetary system by 2030. So I've been thinking about that, and China is starting to look like a good guy. Okay. So, and I had a thought um, the other day that somehow could they put up Xi Jinping as the Antichrist, and not a Christian Antichrist, but an atheist Antichrist? Because the world, I mean, when you get to false prophecy, who cares? <laughs> It doesn't have to be quite right. It just has to look and sound right because it's false prophecy to begin with. So you don't necessarily need a Christian or a Jewish Antichrist. An, anti, uh, an, an atheist Antichrist would work just as well, wouldn't it? So could Xi Jinping and the, and the nation of China be the savior nation of the world? Because they're, because America's not going to work because there's, too many Christians in America. You know, that that lamb-like horn power or division of America is just too prevalent, and it doesn't seem to want to go away. As hard as they're trying to suppress it, it just keeps coming back up. You know, it doesn't matter how many lies and delusions and fallacies they throw at it, uh, as they're doing right now, and they continue to do, trying to vanquish it and smother it. It's not going away, according to the prophecy. Those two horns, the lamb-like, as opposed to the dragon speaking, are remain steadfastly at the same height. One is not overpowered by the other or plucked out by the other. Uh, one does not rise up and dominate the other. It just has these two horns during the lifetime of this beast power. So uh, that says a lot about what we can expect in the future, I believe. Okay. And, uh, and if you like, if you're going, Oh, this guy's nuts. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Get my book, The Beast Apocalyptic. And uh, the subtitle is An Exposition of the Apocalyptic Beast Powers and Related Symbols of Daniel and the Revelation. And if you read this book, uh, you will never be able to unsee or unread what you have written. And it will definitely, definitely uh, affect your view on prophecy and the book of Revelation, and especially as it pertains to Daniel and the symbols therein. When you when you clearly see them, you won't be able to unsee them. I'll put it that way. And uh, for anyone who hears listening to this broadcast, however you're listening to it, whether it's a repeat or not, if you go to my webpage today at crosstheborder.org or nicholasarthur.wordpress.com, uh, find my webpage there and uh, go to the free ebook tab follow the instructions there and put in the comment line um, that you want the beast apocalyptic and i will send you a free pdf of the beast apocalyptic so you can read it and it, and then you won't be able to unsee it <laughs> like i said it will change your mind about everything once you understand what that subtitle says uh, about the apocalyptic beast powers and related symbols of Daniel the Revelation. Once you see it, once you understand it, it will change how you read and see the Revelation. And it, you know, or at least if you don't believe me, you at least want to get a copy so you can debunk me 
and do it publicly, you know, send comments on that page there and, uh, and we'll discuss it on the air. I've, even if you think you could want to debate me on it, I'll debate you on it. But I don't, I have a sneaking suspicion that once you read it, like I said, you won't be able to unread it or unsee it and you won't be able to debate it either because you will, if you're a lover of the truth, you'll have to admit that it is the truth. Okay. So there you go. One time today offer for people hearing this broadcast or listening to this podcast by whatever form, whenever, um, go to that ebook tab on my webpage at crosstheborder.org. That's C-R-O-S-S, crosstheborder.org or nicholasarthur.wordpress.com and click on the e free ebook tab there. Follow the instructions and this put, I'd like a copy of the beast apocalyptic on the comment line there. And I will send you a PDF of it. Absolutely free. Imagine that. Okay. You don't even have to buy a book from me. There you go. All right. So back to it. China, Xi Jinping. Could he be just, this just started going through my mind in the last week. And, uh, the more I think about it, the more I think it's a possibility that Xi Jinping may be put up by the true Antichrist to be the faux Antichrist. That's F-A-U-X Antichrist. Because that's, that's what all of the dispensationalists are waiting for. A phony Antichrist to be put up by the counter-reformation and true Antichrist for the Temple Mount play about to begin. And that's another book. You look up my book, um, you can also get that other book free there. It'll be displayed on the ebook tab if you go over there and, uh, you can get one or the other uh, at a time. And I ask people to leave a, uh, review at Amazon before they ask me for another book. So you can get, and you can get the, the Abraham Accord or when the third temple is built. The Abraham Accord is an update of that earlier book. Um, and it speaks about the play that's about to begin on the Temple Mount. And, uh, and if we get peace in the Mideast, so I see a lot of, a lot of revolutionary type stuff and actions and people, and uh, not, not revolutions, but, uh, um, protests going on in the Mideast, especially in Israel right now. So there is a commotion going on there. So what will be the result of the peace process that has now begun? in the Mideast by China between the people in the Mideast themselves. Could the Abraham Accord be the result of it? It is already going on in some of those Islamic nations that are making peace. They already have the Abraham Accord going on. So if it keeps spreading and it includes, eventually includes Israel in the Mideast process, then they will get their Abraham Accord on the Temple Mount, and the play will begin. Yeah, I'm not predicting that, but I'm saying this is the way it looks like it's going. You don't need to be a prognosticator or a prophet to see what's going on and to, to see a likely result, especially when it's getting, you know, uh, so blatant and uh, so obvious. So, and I've been looking for that for a while, for that the, the Tao, the Abraham Accord to move on to the Temple Mount. And if they do it now in 2023, 2024, it'll be right in time for their 2030 agenda to have it completed. And so they can stand up. So the true Antichrist can stand up and say, see, <laughs> the rapture was not a true prophecy. Yeah, all of you poor deluded people. And then the, the a true Antichrist will stand up and say, yeah, listen to me. Yeah. You will go to heaven when you die, right? Because they have to have the promise of going to heaven when you die. But Jesus is not coming back to this world without end, because that's what they believe, a world without end. The millennium, they are a millennials, but they're living in a world without end where Jesus never comes back, but 
they just they represent Jesus on earth. The Pope does. He's the vicar of Christ. So he usurps the place of Christ on earth. That's how they differ from Reformed Day Millennialists. Reformed Day Millennialists do believe that Christ is going to return, but it's going to be such a brief thing. He's going to, he's going to return, destroy everybody, and take his people to the new heaven and new earth, just like the snap of a finger or something. Why even bother coming back? <laughs> no. But I believe that the millennium is going to play out just as the scripture says. And I believe this because of history. Because if anything, God loves good drama. And, and if you don't believe me, just think about the history. What happened? The pre-flood era, the great flood. I mean, that's a little dramatic, don't you think? And then, you know, raising up a nation of Israel, his own nation, national church, roving the earth, and he destroys them twice. No drama here, people. Nothing dramatic about that. And then he sends his own son to die for our sins. But he doesn't set up the kingdom then. He allows 2,000 more years where his people that he's redeemed are murdered, committed genocide against, martyred, and persecuted for 2,000 years. No drama there, people. No, we can't have a millennium. After all that, we get to the best era to come, the age to come, and the millennials go, oh, no, <laughs> we can't have that. That's, that's a little too much drama. <laughs> yeah, a little too much drama for the amillennial, uh, reformed millennials out there. But their, their amillennialism does differ from the amillennialism of the ant great apostasy and antichrist church yeah so well i'll give them that much anyway they're just going to be pleasantly surprised when jesus comes back and stays for a thousand years yeah there you go okay let's see hey where's uh where's our darky darkeja he's not back this week he must have forgot yeah i enjoyed his comments last week yeah, well, just pray for God's hand to be on your wife there, Stephen. Uh, may the Almighty lay his hand on Jerry there and, and, uh, hope that she is, uh, is healed and feeling well quickly, that it's nothing serious. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for that. All right. Well, that's the first half of this, uh, prophecy reality edition here and i have more to say about the seventh vile era the era that we're in when we get back so don't go anywhere i'll be back in a few minutes the program you are listening to is 100 percent sponsored by you the listener on this first amendment rights media channel you will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network there's a good reason for that Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on satellite, internet, or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for Missionary Radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator, for His holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, -S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org.
When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the third temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn, the Jewish people are eager. Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the third temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a reestablished Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using scripture to interpret scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit crosstheborder.org, C-R-O-S-S, crosstheborder.org to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's crossthebborder.org. Welcome back. You listen to Cross the Border. This is a live prophecy reality edition. And uh, we're looking at um, the sixth and the seventh vials uh, during this hour. And I was just looking at some of the underlying language here um, in Revelation 16, 14. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world. Now see that addition there, and of the whole world, is uh, meaning that it's beyond. And uh, everything that is happening now is not just in the locality, although that's the primary er area of focus when we're speaking of the kings of the East and, uh, and these vials and being the judgment vials being poured out, the focus is, but it does add in there, and of the whole world. So this is a worldwide phenomenon, the effect of these spirits which are uh, going into the whole world. It says to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. And of course, we're there speaking about uh, Armageddon. And I was wondering about this word here where it says working miracles. And uh, I get this, uh, the poeo, that, for the word working to ordain, to provide, uh, to uh, lay weight. So I was just wondering about that, whether these are actual miracles or not, or whether they're pretended miracles. And I would have to agree with uh, E.B. Elliot. These are pretended miracles. These are not real miracles, but they're working these miracles, okay, or supposed miracles, because they have to work them. Okay, so they're not real world miracles. The devil and his and his uh, his minions on the earth they don't have power to do supernatural things. They may have power to feign supernatural things, and it's like the miracle of transubstantiation. That is one of the miracles of the false church, okay, and one of the miracles of the Antichrist church. But it's a false miracle. It's not really happening. Okay? And that's why it's not accepted by true Bible believers. And many of the other of their miracles are all false miracles. For they are the spirits of devils. Okay, so we have these three unclean spirits that were loosed in the sixth vial. After we're given a notice that the Euphrates power that was a woe to Western Christendom okay, uh, was going to be dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. So the kings of the the way of the kings of the east that that they've been prepared for, they have that hasn't materialized as of yet. 
as far as that power being a woe in place of the Euphrates powers. I'm agreeing here with E.B. Eliot and his determination of what these symbols mean and what these phrases uh, encompassing these symbols uh, also mean. Okay? And so we, we don't see that that the kings of the east, there's no kings of the east that is a woe yet to the uh, to those powers that were a woe, Western Christendom anyway. So even though it was stated here at the beginning of the sixth vial when it was poured out, that I believe the drying up part was the thing, and the ways of the kings of the east obviously will appear much later, even as also as part of the sixth vial being poured out were these three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon. Of course, the dragon is Satan, that devil, and uh, and out of the mouth of the beast. And of course, the beast is the governments. And, and specifically in this case would be uh, the governments of Western Europe, and uh, then it says, out of the mouth of the false prophet. Okay? And the false prophet has his influences worldwide. And even in America, uh, he owns Washington, D.C. I believe it belongs to him. The false prophet being none other than the antithesis of the true prophet. So you have to ask the question, if you want to know who the false prophet is, who's the true prophet? Well, of course, Jesus was the true prophet. He was the long-awaited Messiah. He was, that's who the, the true prophet was that was spoken of by Moses, that he told the, the Israel that would appear, okay? He said, a prophet like me is going to appear. And he prophesied certain things about this prophet that would appear. He would be the true prophet. You don't have to put true before prophet in that prophecy of Moses to know that he's speaking of a true prophet or the true prophet. But when the word false prophet comes up, we have to ask the question, who was the true prophet? So we would know that the false prophet would be the antithesis. So we recognize that the false prophet is none other than the man of sin and the antichrist, that they are all one and the same, but it's three different names for to identify one in the same personality, okay? So we know what comes out of the mouth of the false prophet, and then he speaks every, he's very vocal in the world today, the false prophet, with many of the things we were talking about in the prior hours, but climate change, uh, no, you know, all of the perversity that's going on in the world. He was all for the pharmakia, you know, the, the sorcery that was foisted on the whole world beginning in 2020 and 21 and 22 with the drugs, which is what pharmacia is. It's uh, drugs because pharmacia or the sorcery spoken of, of the scripture. Now we, we can, we can relate it directly to the prophecy after what we've seen coming out with the, with the sorcery that was practiced on the whole world. Uh, not only practice, but required to be practiced by everyone uh, in many of countries in the world or many people who worked for um, the government or corporations that are arms of the government. So a lot of people were forced to get this pharmacia injected into them. So we see how that, how fitting that is. So we see the, these unclean spirits like frogs. That means they're very loquacious. They never shut up. And it's very fitting that the one horn of the two horned earth beast, it says it speaks. It speaks like a dragon. Okay. Yeah. Just like those spirits. <laughs> <laughs> and they never shut up and they just get louder and louder as time goes on until we hear this cacophony of evil spirits speaking today from everywhere and they're drowning everything out. So it's very fitting that these spirits loosed with the six vial of the sixth angel when he poured out his vial are in operation even until the consummation because that's what it says here that 
they go forth unto the kings and unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world. Okay. Not just the Roman earth, but the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. That's the next war. That's the big one. That's going to be, uh, the World War III, but I don't believe that that's the war spoken of in the beginning of the seventh when the seventh vial is poured out. But I believe it is the effect of what is the end of the era and the beginning of a new era to come when Christ returns. Uh, your name and where are you calling from? Yes, we must interrupt <laughs> the man who speaks prophecy truth, right? Is that, I mean, that what's going on here? You don't, don't like what I'm saying, but hey, I'm just, you know, uh, doing the best I can here. I want to be correct. I don't want to speak lies. Um, I'm not saying thus saith the Lord, but I'm just reading the word here and trying to call it like I see it and relate it to a uh, prophecy that's already been fulfilled in history and using that prophecy fulfilled on symbols in history and uh, recorded in the Bible for us and some of it, um, yeah, to uh, use that to interpret that which is happening now. So we are in the seventh vial era, still filling the effects of the sixth vial. So one thing you learn is that the effects of these vials carry on even into the next vial. That's what we learn by the words there at the end of the sixth vial uh, that says, for they are the spirits of devils working, which go forth unto the kings of the earth, the whole world, to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. And then we have the seventh vial. And we're still waiting for the kings of the east. And I'm saying it looks, it's looking like China and perhaps Russia, because China and but Russia both are geographically east of the the uh, locality of the ten horn or uh, the ten horn sea beast area so directly east both of those nations so they may together be the kings of the east and if they do start a conflagration perhaps the antichrist will step in and work out or somebody will step in and work out a peace deal. But it may be that there is at least a short-lived conflagration between the kings of the east and the ten-horned earth, uh, ten-horned sea beast locality of Western Europe. Uh, so we may see something like that, some type of woe, because the way of the kings of the east is, it looks like it has been prepared if I'm right, and it is Russia and and China, um, something could happen. But I don't believe that if, if it does happen, that will, it will be as great as the conflagration that we had with World War One and World War Two, because the scripture doesn't talk about, yeah, a second event of that type. But we'll see. Yeah, we, we shall see. Uh, we'll have to play that one by ear. I'm just hoping that if there is, if these Kings of the East thing coming in to uh, Western Europe is a thing that looks like something like that might happen, then we have to look for a peacekeeper, a um, either the Antichrist himself or someone he puts up to be a false Antichrist. And uh, so there's a lot of ways these things, because you're mixing false prophecy, which is what the Antichrist has put up for counter-reformation effect, okay? And it has had an effect. It stopped people from protesting. It stopped Protestants from being protesters against the biblical and historical Antichrist and his great apostasy to looking for a Antichrist in the future and a future great apostasy rather than the biggest apostasy that has ever existed, and I say could ever exist, because it's over two billion strong. So is there really going to be a greater apostasy than that? So we have to, you know, you have to work a little bit of common sense into there. And I guess anything's possible, but just because something is possible, 
because anything's possible, it's very unlikely that we're going to get a greater apostasy than the great apostasy that already exists. I think it's a greater likelihood that more people will join with the great apostasy and are because the great apostasy is inviting people that don't even use the Bible, the other religions in, and they're uh, fellowshipping together. They're accepting everybody in. And so I think it's just the great apostasy growing greater. They, they're even inviting atheists in, because I believe a lot of people in the great apostasy itself are atheists. Yeah. So if they put up a an atheist uh, faux antichrist to bring peace on the earth, it seems like it would be a very fitting thing to fulfill the false prophecy. Because one thing about false prophecy, it does not have to be exact, because it wouldn't be false if it was. <laughs> and that's how we know it's a false prophecy, because it's based only upon conjecture and hypothesis alone, and there is no explicit statement whatsoever uh, supporting supporting it in the scripture. They, they only can support it by conjecture. But hey, you can support gay marriage by conjecture. Yeah, believe me, there's a lot of churches out there today that are embracing the whole trans gay thing, and that's what they do. They conjecture away even that which is explicit. With false prophecy, you don't have to, well, I guess you kind of have to conjecture away what what is explicit in any case with false prophecy, because that's what amillennialism and dispensationalism, and especially the pre-trip rapture, they all are based solely upon conjecture and hypothesis alone, and there have no explicit statement to support them in the scripture whatsoever. And uh, they can't argue with that, because if they argue with it, they always just change the subject or go back to their old sticks to start beating you if you bring up something as uncomfortable as those simple truths. Yeah, believe me, I've talked and, and debated with plenty of them. So I know what they do. They fall back. Um, and I just pray for them, to, their eyes to be opened. And hey, if they're, if they're reformed day millennials, uh, most of them, I believe, are, uh, just deluded about that one thing. And many of them will be there, uh, in the resurrection when Christ returns and we will meet them in the air when we meet Christ in the air. Yeah. And then we will have our, our, I believe the marriage supper of the land is going to take place on the earth while the nations gather and prepare for the great day, the battle of Armageddon. I believe that there is going to be a period where all of the saints who meet Christ in the air and return with him, because we want the whole world, Jesus wants the whole world to see us, and he wants the whole world to know who we are, and that, that his great army is made up of people that were living in, everywhere on the whole earth, who were caught up to join him on his return. And then we are going to meet wherever that designated place is in the Mideast or in the Megiddo Valley or where or Megiddo Mountains or wherever it is we're going to meet. We'll find out then exactly where it happens. And I believe we will have the marriage supper of the Lamb there because we will meet and we will be with him forever from that point on. We will be totally, the, the ceremony will uh, commence and while we're doing that, of course, uh, the world is going to be gathering together. All the nations, the Antichrist nations of the world are going to be gathered together to fight the alien invasion that Jesus represents. That's right. That's what I believe is going on. And that's what I wrote about in my other book, uh, The Millennium Question. That's what it's all about. Plus, it's an, it says, it is what it says it is, an apology for the killism of the primitive church. Uh, let's see, what else, what else can I say about it? But th there's a lot to digest there, people. And, uh, and uh, if you, yeah, let's see, I wasn't informed, I think, in a contact map that you, okay, well, I don't know what the earth seeking to help. All right, okay, well, I don't have, think that has any, that comment has anything to do with our discussion here on the air. Okay. So anyway, I have uh, my I have my la the, the last three books that I published. Um, 
our the beast apocalyptic an exposition of the revelation and the millennium question i have those in one volume and they're available in a paperback from lulu press and if you go to my website which is oops which is here yeah as you can see it and you'll see on the right hand column uh just below the top banner uh you'll see it says three in one volume the revelation enigma decoded and if you click on that it'll take you to lulu press where you can get a copy of that it's uh, 26.99 but it's all three books in one volume it's called the revelation enigma decoded uh, apocalypse trilogy uh, book one the beast apocalyptic uh, book two an exposition of the revelation and book three the millennium question i think it's about four let's see how many pages is it 457 pages okay uh, so it's all three books in one volume for 26.99 um, it's really all you need to to get to where you need you know where you go to what's happening with the book of revelation and uh and the millennium especially uh, if you're interested in that so definitely a book you would like to get but like i said for today i'm offering free if you go to um, the free ebook tab in my website and request that follow the directions there and request a copy of the beast apocalyptic i'll send you a pdf of that absolutely free yeah no no uh no purchase necessary okay and also uh, during the week and it's still uh this week i have been playing my audible version of volume three of the hori apocalyptica and it will play through next week because it takes two weeks uh, on monday tuesday thursday and friday I started playing but uh, it's still in the podcast so if you go to our podcast page um there let's see it, it's available in our podcast player and that podcast player is available at, uh, you can also get that on your device, your Mobi device there at firstamemberradio.net forward slash Mobi. Press on the podcast button there. And, oh no, it's on the front page when you first go there. The podcast player is below that. And you'll see Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And so the Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, uh, Monday and Tuesday are up already. And I will continue playing that on, uh, Thursday and Friday. But then next Monday, it'll overwrite the first session and uh, because those are updated every week uh, on the day that they are updated. So Mondays next week will replace this week's Monday. So you have all week to listen to it if you want to listen to the whole third volume of the Hori Apocalyptica. It is there for you. And that's our new 21st century edition, <coughs> which is available at amazon okay and this just published just got it up there on amazon um and you can see volume three there so i have both all three volumes of the 21st century edition a uh, hori apocalyptic a volume three and historicist commentary on the revelation updated and revised for the 21st century uh and it's in paperback and hardback i still haven't published volume four but i will publish it for those and there's nothing deleted Okay, I did move some of uh, of E. B. Eliot's chapters that were replaced. I moved them to the appendix, so they're still there if you want to peruse them. So nothing is deleted; it's just been updated and revised and brought up to date to 2023, uh, filling in the blanks because E. B. Eliot quit writing uh, in 18 1862, so he got everything up right up through the uh, beginning of the 19th century uh so there it is for you so you can get all three volumes there at uh at amazon you just can't get the fourth volume um the new volumes are not on at lulu press yet but i plan on updating those as soon as i get through this um but yeah it's a much better volume than our previous uh uh, quincentennial reformation edition which is which is which is pretty good but still some things needed to be redone and uh, and added to it because uh, i've advanced quite a bit 
since 2018 because I didn't realize uh, that the seventh vial had already been poured out. I was still trying to place it. And all those questions started coming uh, to the forefront as I've been going through this volume page by page because I've had to read every word because I'm also doing this audible. So I've had to read every word and I've done a lot of research in doing this. And uh, so far, it took me uh, several months just to research the changes I wanted to make for the third volume. And I'm working very hard in the fourth volume, too, because it starts with the seventh vial. So that's where I'm at, and that's why I'm speaking so much about it, even now, still, as I'm still researching it and trying to, because I want to get it up to date as far as I can with the same historicist method of interpretation. Okay, well, there's our tone. We've come to the end of the broadcast. I want to thank you all for joining me and putting up with me for two hours. May, all, may the Almighty bless you and keep you. And say a special prayer there for Jerry, uh, Stephen's wife. I'll see you next time.